Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Okay, another tool review for you now and another Lidl's power tool for you. Just been for me annual, uh, annual, weekly uh, shop, Thursday shop, and there was one tool in there that I didn't have. Um, as you'll know, I've got quite a collection of power tools, mainly little ones, and it was this one which was a multi-tool, a cordless multi-tool. Now, I've had, I'll show you in detail, obviously, soon. Now, I've had this works multi-tool for quite a few years. And if you don't know what a multi-tool is, they've got interchangeable blades. You can have scrapers, curved ones, diamond ones. Oh, they're going into these in, in the with the Littles one. Um, and they're really, really handy for certain jobs. Now, this is one, like I say, I've had for years. But it is, as you can see, it's a mains operated one. It's really good. It's it served me well. It's uh, works Sonic Crafter. And a lot of them, when they came out, or when I bought this, probably, I don't know, six, seven years ago, you changed the tool. You needed a, an Allen key or something to change the multi-tool. What I liked about this was... That you could just unscrew it like that, pull the multi tool out, put it, drop it on the floor, put it back in, then you just screwed it down and clipped that in, and it was a great method. Now, the Liddles one, as you'll see, is very similar. In fact, it's even quicker than that. It's totally toolless to put the tools in. So, first of all, I've, I have obviously taken it out because I've already filmed the demo of me uh, using it, which you'll see soon. But this is the uh, box seam. You may want to freeze frame of that and read some of the details off it. Gives you what's included there. And as you can see, three year warranty, as with all the uh, Little's Parkside power tools. So that's the box it comes in. Now, as you see, it's like a bare bones one. There is no battery and no charger. The reason being, I'll show you. So it comes in a blow molded case, like they usually do. The cases are okay. Um, I do find the bits inside that you clip in, any sort of accessories and attachments, they don't usually hold them very well, and this is uh, a point in case. As I open it up, you can see this bit here, which is the vacuum attachment, so you can attach a vacuum to suck dust out as you're using it. That goes in the lid there, but it doesn't clip in. It's supposed to clip in like that, and it doesn't. You'll find when you open it, it's fallen out. But it's a minor point. If you were that keen, you could put some Velcro in or something like that. So again, I'll show you that shortly. But this is what comes in it. The book, again, the book, it's in a few languages, and 99% of it is all safety stuff. It gives you hardly any instructions on the tool. It doesn't even tell you how to put properly the, uh, the, the blades in. But that's the tool itself. And again, I'll show you how this goes soon. That, that attaches the... Uh, bit I just showed you for the the vacuum attachment and the little bits the the blades and the sanding attachment and that are in there so I'll show you these now now as I mentioned it is a bare bones unit there's no battery pack and there is no charger the reason being it uses the same batteries and charger as these other tools i've already got the planer i've done a review on that check the link up here for the planer review nice little thing <coughs> ideal for smaller jobs all these are just 12 volt powered tools so not for doing big jobs uh, make no mistake yet it, they will struggle on the bigger job they're not designed for that. They're, they're designed to be portable, lightweight, and on the, the lightweight jobs. So that's the planer. Another handy tool. I've used this loads. Little 
grindstone. Again, not the power of a full 4-inch or bigger angle grinder mains powered or, or bigger battery powered, but ideal for little lightweight jobs where you don't need massive power for, like for chopping nails off and things like that. That's that. And this, which I've had for absolutely years. Now, this is a very early one. Again, I've done a review on this in the the video I did called why I like little tools I'll tell you if you, if you have a look at that I'll tell you how great they were at replacing this when it was nearly three years old this is the one they sent me a brand new one which I've I've not actually used I'm still using the old one which worked even though they, they replaced it full stories in there but these use the same type of battery 12 volts but these early ones these early tools we're only 1.3 amps and they won't fit even though it looks exactly the same as the current batteries which are 2 amps the groove on the side is slightly different so they're not compatible so you can't fit one of these 2 amp batteries in the older range of, of, of 12 volt tools and vice versa and again they won't fit in the, the same charger you need this one because this is only 1300 milliamps 1 1.3 amps it's a much lower rated charger than the, the one this goes in which is a 2.4 amp charger so if you haven't got any of the existing little 12 volt they call it the team x 12v team range of tools and the battery and the charger you're going to have to get one so i've taken these photographs while i was in little today of all the uh, the tools they do and the the batteries and the chargers so let's have a look at them and how much they are so these are the pictures i took earlier in little so that shows the planer that i've just showed you i've had that for quite a while check out my review on that 30 quid again these are all bare bones no batteries or chargers with any of these that's the drill now as i showed you i've got the early version i've not got that version that's the new improved version as you see it's got a removable chuck so you could go straight from drill and a screwdriver bit mine's been fantastic my early one for years and uh, that's the little tiny angle grinder again really nice handy little tool to have for sewing chopping off nails and things well, that's the multi-tool that i got that we're reviewing in this review which we'll be carrying on with soon there's even a cordless pruning saw there i would have thought that might have needed a few more volts than 12 but obviously it seems to be okay i don't know i won't be reviewing that or this cordless hedge trimmer because my garden doesn't have uh, any trees or any hedges so I've, I've no use for them so i can't say how they'll perform but I would imagine they're okay so if you don't own a battery or a charger this is what you're going to have to get uh, 12.99 for the battery and the charger the ch battery on its own i forgot to uh, take a picture of that is just 9.99 and if you do need a 12 volt 4 amp battery although as i said it's going to stick out a bit further it's a bit bulkier so it's not going to flow in as nice with the actual contours of the tool and it's going to be a bit heavier obviously but if the amount of running time is important to you obviously that will last twice as long as the 2 amp battery and it's uh, that's just for the battery on its own 15 pounds so as you saw there the tool I'm reviewing now the multi-tool is 19.99 at so 20 quid and if you haven't got a battery and charger you've got to add another 12 9 and 13 quid to that so you're talking about 33 quid for the tool the charger and the battery but of course if you've already got the existing tools you don't need to buy the battery you can easily swap around so the tool itself is only 20 quid which i think is good value so i'll show you in detail now what you get with it so like i say that's the actual tool it's multi-speed you've got five it goes from six five four three two one on the side there the battery just clips in voila and you've got a power meter here three 
little lights. Red, amber and green. Red needs recharging. Red and amber is like halfway down. All three, including the green on, it's fully charged or pretty near charged. And if you can see this, you can see all three come on. And I haven't charged it since I've done the demo. So everything you're about to see me do, which I've already filmed outside on a fully charged battery, it's still showing fully charged. So it should last quite a bit. Like I said, only a two amp battery. As I showed you in the, the pictures, you can get a four amp battery. But that is fit, and it, it will physically fit, but it does stick out a bit more, and obviously it'll weigh a bit more. So if you're only going to use it for the odd little lightweight job, the 2 amp battery should easily suffice. But if you were using it for longer jobs away from any means of charging, you might want to get a 4 amp battery. Um, like I said, on all the ones I've got, I like them because the lightweight, small and compact. So I have just a small battery in them. So that's it, battery in. Speed selector, like I said, that's going from speed 6. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I don't know what you'd use one on. That's very, very uh, slow. So I can't see it cutting much on that. And there's also a little LED light on the front now, which is pretty bad. I don't know if you can see that. Again, you'd... I have it on five or six speed. So that's the vacuum attachment. If you're going to use that, that goes on like that there before you put any tools on. And then this clip here just goes around there. There's a little groove in it for it there. Clip it in. And that holds it in. Unfortunately, a bit of a bad design there. It covers the LED light if you're using the, uh, the vacuum attachment. But... Uh, Anything I tend to be doing on this, I, I never really tend to uh, create that much dust with something like this, so I don't think I'll have much use for that. So that's that. Now, in this box, you get all the blades. And what you get with it is a scraper blade. You'll see I've already used it to scrape off some... Uh, hot glue I put on a piece of wood and a tile. You'll see that shortly when I'll show you the demo outside. That's a scraper blade. Like I said, you would use that for scraping old paint off, uh, going along, say, a windowsill, levelling it out, so anything like that. This one, which is a diamond-tipped curved blade, you would use that for getting old grout out before you re-grout your bathroom tiles. Again, you'll see shortly, me trying to cut a tile with it, it won't cut tiles. It's not ideal for that. I'm trying to cut a really thick tile, and it's it's not designed for that. You would use a proper tile cutter and nibble it off. But, but getting out grout or, or, or anything like that would be ideal. The main blade you will use would be that. And you can get all sorts of um, different blades. Again, I'll show you them online soon. These are just for cutting wood and softer materials like plasterboard, plastic, and soft wood. You wouldn't use this on metal, but you can get metal cutting blades for it. And finally, you get the sanding attachment. So that goes on just like the blade. And then... You get a variety of these discs. The red ones are a, a rougher texture. Uh, is it 120? And the black ones are a finer texture. They've got 60 on them. And once you've attached that the same as the blades, it's uh, Velcro here or hook and eye or whatever with the hooks on this bit. And the furry bit is on there. You just line it up, put it in place, like most current day sanders. It just attached by Velcro, and it, it holds it really, really well. And the little holes are help 
clear the dust again i'll show you that shortly outside so to put the blades on like i said the instruction book is pretty useless to tell you the truth really thick instruction book just exploded diagram of the parts but it doesn't even tell you how to actually put a blade on and what might confuse you at first is you pull this forward out of its clip and it sort of stops there now you're reluctant to push it any further and you think well it's not doing anything it's just dangling in midair and then you click it down there it's not actually opening anything up here but what you do is push it right forward against the spring and it's quite a strong spring as you're doing it and when you get to there it stays in that position and you then you'll see these little blips on here they line up with the little holes in the tool so as you move that lever you will see that bit there at the end Sorry about it being out of focus, but uh, that bit there is moving in and out as you do it. So as you move it out, it gives you the clearance to insert the blade and you line it up with the holes. So you can have it straight like that, how you'd normally use it. But if you were in a confined space, you could put it sideways like that and you can cut sideways you can cut any sort of angle you like so in normal use if you've if space is no problem you would you would do it like that so once that's on its little lugs you then lower this down and it grips it really really firmly and then the way they work is it just vape vibrate backwards and forwards so these little saw teeth here they cut both ways and as it's vibrating like that it's doing its cut so you just turn it on you can see it now vibrating around we'll try and get it to focus on it there And that's how these multi-tools work. Now, the advantage with one of these tools is that you can start the cut right in the middle of the object. So you can do a plunge cut, hold it there, turn it on, and it will start cutting. So you can, it's ideal for cutting a hole right in the middle of something like that. Now, that would be very difficult with any sort of uh, mini plunge or mini circular saw or, or anything like that. You'd normally have to drill a hole and then use a jigsaw around or drill a hole at each corner but you can get an absolute as you'll see soon perfect square cut by using one of these and that's in a piece of uh, laminate flooring that uh, i've left over from the project right below me check out another one of my videos up here about laying a laminate floor and uh, although it's only very thin they are very uh, Oh, it's very hard stuff to cut so let's have a look now at the bit i recorded earlier on outside on the workbench with me cutting some various materials and showing you uh, just what it can do what i'm going to do now is something that this is ideal for something you'd, you'd probably use this for just a piece of laminate flooring but it's really hard stuff this so uh, we're going to try cutting a square in it so start that i've got it on speed four again not sure what speed you'd use but i think four five and six we'll try it on speed four and let's see how quick we can cut a little square <laughs>
you can see we've got a really good square in that it'd be quite hard to get it any other way i've gone a bit over here as you can see but if i was really more careful i could have sort of done it like that but like i say even though it's pretty thin laminate flooring is, is very very hard if you've ever tried to saw it so there's no other sort of tool that you could do that with if you tried it with a, a mini circular saw with it cut in a circular form you'd need to come do cuts right this way so uh, that's something it's ideal for so let's try it on just this piece of wood here now again it's pretty thick it's about half inch thick sort of skirting board this so it's not something you'd use this for so i'm just going to try cutting a, a corner trim off it in very sort of thin slices that's the sort of thing you'd use it for not for doing big long cuts you'd use uh, another tool for that so uh, I've put some hot glue on here as you can see it's stuck pretty much so let's try the uh, the scraper tool now on it and see how it gets rid of that okay so we've got some hot glue on there from a little hot glue gun see me review on that as well and we've got the scraper blade on it now so you could probably scrape this off just by pushing but uh, see how it does So as you can see it gets that off easy but it would it is just hot glue but you can see it will dig into the uh, the wood as well you could take the top layer of wood off so you can see they're quite a wafer thin sort of curl so like a really really thin piece with a planer really but shows you what the just the scraper attachment can do so we'll now try it on um, a tile see how it cuts a tile right let's see how it goes with this uh, tile yeah so as you can see not great on tiles this um, thing more for getting softer grout out i would think but a tile as you know is extremely extremely hard so you'd use a, a nibbler or a straight cutting a ta proper tile cutting tool to do that and then just snap it off with a pair of pliers unfortunately i've not got any grout or tiles grouted to show you that but i'm sure it'd get rid of grout really good because it's as you know grout is a lot softer than the tile itself so finally, just a bit of uh, plastic. Let's see how it cuts through this. Again, for like cutting beveled edges on stuff like that ideal for that but again you'd just use a normal saw to uh, cut this unless you were in a tricky uh, a tight spot so we've got the sanding attachment on now it's velcro as i showed you before this side the little hooks on the back of these pads it's the uh, like the furry side of the velcro and you just push that on there this is the rougher of the two sanding pads you, you get with it so let's uh, create something so i'll do a couple of gouges in this wood so just do a couple of things in there just to see how it sands them out Yeah, 
Now, as you can see, it's so windy today that uh, I'm not really going to be able to demonstrate the effectiveness of the uh, the vacuum collecting uh, thing on the bottom. I was hoping, you know, this coat underneath would catch all the sawdust, but it's just blowing it away anyway. So there's no point in me showing you the the attachment for the vacuum. So that and there's not much clog in here. These holes let let the dust out. So yeah, the probably the handiest thing I've ever used this for, and absolutely ideal for it, is fitting a mortise lock. Now, if ever you've fitted a mortise lock, that's the sort of lock that you unlock with a key in a door. As you know, you've got to put the whole lock, which is about this deep, in the door, in the edge of the door. So you've got to cut a slot that deep and about that high, and it's not much uh difference to the actual width of the door itself so you've not got much clearance each side so you would normally stitch drill it with a little drill and then use a wood chisel and hammer to to get it out whereas with one of these you can get exact really good smooth vertical lines right down and you can get smaller ones smaller width ones of these because obviously that's wider than uh, your average mortise lock so you want to have one about half as wide as this and then you can get the top and that and you can get a really de as deep as that slot right up to here right into the door and then use your, your chisel to to get that out and you end up with a really really neat uh, slot and you can get it right near the edge of the door without uh, splitting it on the outside so i do find it really really handy for fitting mortise locks um so as long as you keep your specialist blades keep these blades for this for little jobs like that they will last long but like i said they are a, a bit expensive if, if you don't do that so that's it dead dead easy just to remove the tool pull the lever up pull it out and straight out now the good thing is you can fit this is one of the two the blades from the old the works one the works sonic crafter and you can see in that one it's slots instead of holes but they are totally because it works there underneath but if you see any of these slotted blades again i'll be showing you some of the metal cutting ones online soon they are totally compatible as you see that will go in there goes in the slots and it grips it just as good as the one the ones that come with it with the holes so either ones with holes or ones with slot are totally compatible and you'll find most of these multi-tool fittings now are like that a universal method of fitting them so that's that and like i say the the sander already got the sanding disc on just mount as you would oh, whoops one of the other tools and put that on and you've got your uh, sanding this there so like i say it's still showing fully all three lights on it and i have already done all the demo outside so uh I'll just show you online now some of them accessory uh, parts that you can get for it for cutting metal. So you can see on here, I've just uh, typed in metal cutting blade for multi-purpose tool on uh, Google. And you can see there are loads and loads of uh, tools, um, Makita ones. Ooh, bit hefty price there, 64. But... Um, Stuff from that screw fix there. There's that one for cutting metal, uh, a metal buster blade, 1898. There, as you can see, they are quite dear compared to other sort of blades, um, wood, metal cutter, and all that. Again, you'll get what you pay for. That the the better Dewalt type stuff will uh, cut. I find Erbauer quite quite good from screw fix, um, but loads and loads of different stuff. So if you do want to cut metal with it, it is available. And if you're only using it for the specialised jobs that you absolutely need it for, 
then it's uh, it's going to be worth worth getting. But you can see whether it's slots like this. Most of them tend to have slots round. They are totally compatible with this little tool. And as I've just shown you, they will fit. So as you saw there, metal cutting blades are readily available. Uh, like I said, the advantages, the pros of something like this are, I've already mentioned, cutting square holes like that. Cut, I've used it for trimming a tiny bit off the bottom of the door. Uh, not enough to warrant taking the door off and planing it all or anything like that. But if you just want to cut a tiny bit off, or if, say, a nail is sticking out somewhere just under there, it, it would be almost impossible to get any other tool in because the floor's in the way. But on something like this, as you can see, you can get right down that floor level once you put it on the right way around. get right down floor level and chop off any sort of nail there's nothing else you could do you'd never get a hacksaw in or any other sort of saw that's the only way you're doing it so that's the advantage the disadvantage of these is the blades they don't last as long as say a full hacksaw blade or a circular saw blade as you can appreciate you've only got that amount of teeth you can get different widths of these as well i've got some wider ones and uh You've only got them going backwards and forwards, so they're soon going to get blunt, and and they do sort of get blunt, and they're not cheap as you saw on the metal cutting ones, like four quid for one metal cutting one. Every now and then, Lidl's do have a pack of these in, and I've seen them in Aldi they make as well. So it's worth keeping an eye open for any specialised cutting ones and, and getting some spare in stock. Um, but yeah, they, they they're not that cheap compared to other blades, and they don't last that long. But, of course, it's something you'd only use when you can't use anything else. And it's a really, really, really handy tool to have in your arsenal, in your garage, for, for when it's needed. Like I said, for cutting um, in plasterboard, the blade would last for ages. You don't need a particularly uh, sharp blade for that. And also, for uh, I do a lot of modelling. Most models, radio control models now are uh, foamy. EPO foam, but uh, I still do build some balsa models, and cutting uh, balsa is uh, ideal. Even if you had to take it with you down to the field or something like that, it's a it's a lot lighter than the mains one. Obviously, that's really really hefty. Uh, one point seven kilograms that weighs. This weighs just under one kilogram, so nearly half the weight. So. Like I said, that's the beauty about them. Okay, they're not going to have the power of the big DeWalt's and Makita's 24-volt, 18-volt ones or whatever, or the mains-operated ones, but that's not what they're designed for. They're designed for lightweight work, nice, compact, lightweight battery. Two amps should do you loads of time. The charger, forgot to say, charges in one hour, and it cuts off at the end. Like I said, I didn't buy the charger because I already had it. And on my charger, that's the, uh, the charger, and you just pop the battery in it like that. And uh, on mine there's a red and a green light. Red when it's charging, green when it's fully charged. Looking at the pictures on the boxes of the new ones, they look the same, but it's slightly different wording or sticker in the middle and it does say they automatically turn off at the end of the charge I'm not sure whether this the earlier ones do um, because when it's fully charged it just shows green so yeah takes about one hour from totally dud to charge like i said it's a two amp battery and this is putting out 2.4 amps so it'll, it'll charge up in under an hour so uh yeah um i think at 19.99 for the bare bones unit with all them uh you know three or four i don't know how many discs you get three you get three sanding discs of each one three fine and three rough the scraper blade the diamond blade and the unit for 19.99 with a three-year warranty
which Lidl's do stand by, like I say, see in the other video for that, they're great um, with standing the warranty, it should you ever need it, I've very rarely needed it, but when I have, I've had no problems whatsoever. So hopefully that has helped if you're thinking of uh, buying one. I, I will thoroughly recommend it. Like I said, I've never had any real problems. Uh, the odd small problem I've had with the very odd uh, little power tool has been sorted by them really quick. And they are great, great value for money in my opinion. So I shall see you very, very soon for another review. If you do want to subscribe, please click the little picture of the shed here if you like this video please click like as well and i'll catch you for the next one as soon as i find something that takes me fancy to review thanks for watching this one bye for now